All right, we're going to get started. Welcome everybody to Success Zone. Uh, my name is Jeff Giamalba. Happy Friday. Another week has gone by. Where did it go, right? Amazing. Um, Fourth of July is upon us, as you all know, halfway point, right? We should all get our Christmas trees, right? We get all <laughs> set up. It'll be Christmas before you even know it. So, um, just so everybody understands the platform here, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this time, we do what we call Success Zone, which is basically just a roadmap, uh, different types of trainings to help you on your journey to whatever company or whatever opportunity you have chosen. Um, wanna open up with this quote um, from Richard Branson, um, because you know, a lot of you, you know, we all live in the United States of America, right? They call it the land of opportunity. And you know, there's opportunities all around us. Every day, we're inundated, right, with, with different ways of making money. And I, I love Richard Branson's, um, you know, Virgin, Richard Branson's Virgin Airlines, uh, Virgin Records, multi-billionaire. He says, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity, and you're not sure you can do it, say yes, then learn how to do it later. See, most people, it's the opposite approach. And you know what happens when the opposite approach comes into play? Procrastination. And guess what happens when procrastination sets in? Usually nothing. See, his mentality is, yes, I'm in, right? And if it's an amazing opportunity, I'll figure it out. I mean, my wife and I, Lisa and I, you know, we've been in the industry for 25 years. We were just approached with an amazing opportunity just, just four or five months ago. And guess what? We didn't know anything about the industry. Made no difference. We said, yes, amazing opportunity. First to market, all the different bells and whistles that we got excited about. And that's the key. We got excited about it, and that's all we had to know. See, if you're excited, the how-to will come. There's a saying, if the desire is there, the how-to will come. But most people are going to wait, and they'll wait, and they'll make sure, and due diligence sets in. Not saying not to do those things, but, okay, the whole thing is to move. In anything that you do, it's movement. And movement creates momentum. Movement, momentum. Movement, momentum. They go hand in hand. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So um, as we do on Friday, guys, you know, always Mr. Eric Worry wants to be part of uh, Success Zone. And uh, I always tell him, I said, Eric, you know, you got to, you know, you just, you got to find your own platform, brother. You know, you can't just keep feeding on my people. He says, Jeff, please, please, let, can, I, can I please be on one more time? I said, all right, Eric, we'll let you on one more time. Okay, my people are getting a little tired of you, but that's okay. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, oh, hang on, hang on, I got to do something here. I got to do screen share. I got to click this. And guys, this is, this will set the pace for what we're going to talk about today, but Turn your volumes up. This is, uh, this is uh, something that you... A few here. key concepts, three key concepts, actually, that Jim Rohn had a major impact on my life by implanting these ideas, the power of an idea, these ideas into my mind. The first one was simple, and you might have heard it over the course of your career, but I'll tell you, I heard it from Jim Rohn, and that was simply this. He said, he said to me, first on audio, then in seminar, and then eventually in person. The same thing. Eric, for things to change, you have to change. For things to get better, Eric, you have to get better. It's not other things that need to change. It's you that needs to change. This, this exploration of personal responsibility and personal growth changed my whole life. Every time I started hoping for other things to change, I started saying, nope, I need to change. Nope, I need to get better. When things got tough, I said, Eric, you've got to get better. And that really changed when I was able to take control of my life through that philosophy. 
for things to change, you got to change. For things to get better, you got to get better. And guess what? It worked with prospects too. All I had to tell prospects was, guess what I learned? For things to change, I have to change. For things to get better, I have to get better. And the prospects, prospects would go, you know what? You're right. Fine. I'm ready to get going. Let's make it happen. For things to change, I have to change too. Right? So that was concept number one. For things to change, you've got to change. For things to get better, you have to get better. Concept number two is success isn't something that you pursue. Success is something you attract by the person that you become. Wow, this changed everything for me. When I went, wait a minute, you mean I, you mean I need to become more attractive in business? and then people will attract to me. I don't have to chase and pursue to try to get success. Wow, that would change everything. If I started working on becoming better again, getting stronger, getting better, and I learned to attract success, and that's what I found out has been so true over the course of my career. If I work on becoming more attractive in business, everything will start to take care of itself. I don't have to chase and be so desperate all the time. So that was concept number two becoming more attractive, learning how to attract success versus pursue success. And concept number three is, and this was so great for me because I struggled in formal education. He said, formal education, Eric, will make you a living. You can get a check from a formal education. You'll get a paycheck. Self-education will make you a fortune. So formal education, everybody goes through. You kind of have to go through that. But what are you gonna do after formal education is done? Self-education will make you a fortune. And I went, wow, okay. He was the one that had me start, because I back, back then, if I read any book, within about two pages, I was ready to go to sleep. I was just exhausted, you know, just like Ugh. But he said, Eric, just start by reading 10 pages a day. Find a book that interests you, read 10 pages a day. You can get through a 300 page book in a month if you do that and start to develop the discipline because I started just listening to audio programs. I did not have any discipline to read. And he made me become a reader. He said, readers are leaders. Self-education, what are you doing to improve your skills all the time? Are you taking charge? And I'm one of the things I'm most proud of is how much I've educated myself since I left formal education. How much I've educated myself, how many books I've read, how many seminars I've gone to, how many skills I've worked on and developed, how many coaches I've had and mentors I've had in my life in order to be able to get better. Self-education will make you a fortune. Formal education will make you a living. You get a paycheck. Self-education, you get to be financially free. I've read probably two books a week on average for the last 20 plus years. So it's a lot of books, a lot of books. Why? Because Jim Rohn taught me that self-education will make you a fortune. And, and if you stop growing, you start dying. So I want to continue in that growth pattern. So those are three key concepts that Jim Rohn taught me that helped me and that helped my network marketing career. For things to change, I had to change. For things to get better, I had to get better. To attract, success is something you attract. It's not something you pursue and self-education will make you a fortune. Formal education will just make you a living. Those three things help me so much. I hope they'll help you. Hope you got value from this. And ladies and gentlemen, my wish for all of you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional, that you decide to go pro, because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hey. All right, thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. I think that was very valuable. I'm gonna use that theme tomorrow on our, um, our Saturday training that we do. That's, the, that's, that's just off record, guys. So, um, but anyway, I, I love that. That, um, that, that. that goes a long way because anybody who's ever, ever, ever done well in anything, right? It was always about self-discipline and, and doing what you're supposed to do. So, you know, before we get into the training, I know I, I like to put this up. You know, I'm a big Nike guy, as you guys know. So if you guys are going to get better, got to quit making excuses, putting it off, complaining about it, dreaming about it, whining about it, crying about it, believing you can't, worrying if you can't, wanting until you're older, skinnier, richer, braver, right? Everything has to be perfect. 
or all around better. Suck it up, hold on tight, say a prayer, make a plan, and what? Just do it. Just do it. Okay, it's, 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 so, it's so amazing how people hold on to all the excuses and why they can't. And the only way I've ever known how to do something is fast, is fast. I rather ready, aim, ready, fire, aim, and I'll get good enough to ready, aim, fire. Ready, fire, aim. Okay, I'm just going to go do it. I know I'm going to screw up. I know without a doubt I'm going to be made fun of. See, if you already know what's going to happen, how can it possibly affect you? It can't. How can a no affect you if you know a no is coming? And this is, this is the key to success. You have to know the answers. And most of you on this call, you already know. And now that you know, now when you go out there and pursue, you know the roadblocks are going to be there. And now you just laugh at the roadblocks. That's how you make this thing fun. So, you know, what I want to share with you guys is this today, is, is really how to go out there and, and, and just make that decision to go all in. Go all in based on what you're willing to do. It always has to be that. Okay, and, and I, I've talked about this so that I'm blue in the face. But, you know, every day you should hear the same thing over and over again. There's only so many principles to success. Now, once that's out of the way, now it's just about doing it. And the best way to do it is just to launch, is to launch your business. And the, here's the beautiful part of this. When you launch your business, you could always restart. You could always relaunch. I'll give you an example. I've used this analogy many times for a lot of you on this call, right? If you were going to buy any traditional business, would you not have a grand opening? Of course you would. You know what a launch is? It's letting people know it's you coming out, right? You know, remember the Diana Ross song, I'm coming out? Okay, and she meant something else. I'm talking about you're coming out and you're letting people know, okay, that you know what? I've started a business and I'm not trying to get you in my business. I'm letting you know what I'm doing. And the more people you let know what you're doing, the more business you're going to have. Because if you don't believe enough to come out, how do you expect to sell your products? How do you expect to attract people? Remember what Eric said? Attract people into your business. And you know what makes most people come out in a traditional business? The, the amount of money they have in the game. Fear of loss makes them come out. Not desire to gain. I promise you that. It's never desire to gain. What motivates people is fear of loss. Think, everybody on the call, what motivates you to go to work every day? Desire to gain? No. Because if you have a formal education, what does he say? That'll help you make a living. Because all you got is all you got. So you go to work every day based on fear of loss. Well, it has to be the same thing here. Okay, if you bought a traditional business and you have hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in it, that makes you have the grand opening. That makes the fear somewhat go away. And you got to do the same thing here. You got to pretend you got a million dollars in this, in whatever business you have. I mean, think about it. Okay, if you owned a restaurant, I've used this many times and you got $400,000 in the game. Let me ask you all a question. Would you have a grand opening? Why? $400,000 in the game. Would you have a problem making a list of people you would invite to your grand opening? You'd invite everybody. I remember, I remember the story when I first got involved. I think it was, I don't know, first, first five years. I was prospecting somebody and I got somebody really, really good. And I, I sat down with him. I said, okay, we got to put together your list. And he goes, Jeff, listen, I, I don't know very many people. In fact, 
I want to put off my launch because I'm, I'm about to get married. I said, oh my gosh, congratulations. And then all of a sudden it hit me why I'm, I'm talking to this gentleman. I said, wait a minute, you just said you don't know a lot of people. Can I ask you one question? I remember his name, Mike. I said, how many people do you have come into your wedding? He said, 500. I said, wait a minute, you just told me you don't know anybody, but yet you got 500 people coming to the wedding. See, I promise you, if he opened up a restaurant, all 500 of those people would be invited to the grand opening. And I just repeat it back. He goes, you're right. And then he said, you know what it really is? And I know what it really is. He goes, it's my belief. I'm not there yet. But you know what happens in a traditional business? You're forced. It's forced belief. Because you put your skin in the game. It doesn't matter. Can you imagine not inviting people to your grand opening? Well, you, can you imagine making your list, right, with your restaurant? Let's say it's a steakhouse. Can you imagine sitting there making your list going, oh, Mike, uh, he doesn't like steak. Take him off. Mary, oh, no, no, Mary's a sushi girl. No, no, I can't invite Mary. Do you ever, do you believe in a million years you would do that? No. You would invite them no matter what. It would make no difference. Why? I got a half a million dollars in the game. You wouldn't go down. But let me say this. Think about how you make your list. Just think about it. Why? Because what do you guys have in your game? Think about this. Let's just be honest with each other. How much money do you really have in the game you've chosen? I already know the answer. Because most of you, in most companies, you can't put in more than 1,000. Let's say it's 5,000. Is that enough to take away the fear of loss? Probably not. Do you see, do you see the first step, what happens? I know what happens because I know what happened to me. But you would invite everybody. You would tell everybody you talk to. You'd make flyers. You're having a grand opening. You tell everybody how great the food is. Now, how do you know how great the food is? No one's even eaten it yet, but you tell everybody how great the food is. But think about your business. Well, I have to use the product first before I could go market it. What? What? No, I gotta understand the comp plan. Can you imagine having to understand the profitability of the steak before you market it? You don't care about all that. You see the stuff that holds us back? Tell me I'm not right. I know I'm right. I know what holds people back from launching their business. So the whole purpose is to have your grand opening. Now, another analogy. Do you know how many times we relaunched we had a re-grand opening when I was with Bally Health Clubs. Remember, I was the vice president of sales, and so I would look at underperforming clubs. And I would say, okay, and I would target a club. I'd say, okay, Matson, Matson, Illinois. That was one of our clubs, okay? And I'd say, okay, Matson hasn't hit their numbers in two months. It's time to re-grand open. Now watch, matson has been there 10 years. But I'm gonna re-grand open the club, so you know what I would do? I'd go there, I'd put one new piece of equipment in the club. Now mind you, the club would have 500 pieces of equipment. I'd put one new piece and I'd put a whole marketing campaign surrounding one new piece of equipment. And I get all the salespeople fired up about the new re-grand opening. Club's been there 10 years. Do you know what drove that? The excitement that we were going to have a re-grand opening. Nothing was really new. But the people got re-excited about it. Is this hitting home with some of you who've been involved in your company and you're thinking, I can't relaunch? You can relaunch. You got to relaunch your own excitement. That's how you relaunch. 
You don't relaunch getting everybody else excited. You relaunch to get yourself excited. It's all about you. It has nothing to do with anybody else. You drive the excitement. You drive the momentum. You got to re-excite yourself. And so all we would do is we put some balloons at the front desk, right? We open the front doors. I maybe get a spotlight and we'd have a re-grand opening and the numbers would shoot up. You know what it would do? The following 90 days, it would drive momentum. Because guess what happened in a re-grand opening? We got a new flush of members. Oh, oh, wow. Same concept, health clubs, network marketing? What happens when you, what happens when you launch a grand opening of a restaurant? I got new customers. Doesn't every business want what we want? What's the difference, everybody? You own a traditional business. And so the next 90 days would be driven by the excitement of the new people. You want your business to change? Give birth. You got to give new birth. And guess what? You're re-excited. Let me give you another analogy. Have you ever been to Disneyland? Maybe that's a bad analogy, but I'm from California. So I've been to Disneyland thousands of times. Okay, do you know what? I could go to Disneyland by myself. Hard to get excited. Now, just because you're around the atmosphere, I, I, I love it because it's memories. But if I bring somebody to Disneyland who's never been there before, guess what? I see the excitement through them. You see what happens when you give birth? When you give birth, you're re-excited for the new person. Now, some of you, uh-oh, here we go now. I'm going to step on some toes. Some of you don't want to give new birth. Why? Because you're afraid to bring somebody into this world. Oh, there I said it. You don't want to give birth because you're thinking, what if this person that I just gave birth to gets, is get, starts getting the same results I'm getting? You really want to talk some tr truth? That's what stunts most people. I will promise you that. I know. Well, th this is why I can't bring people into my company yet because it's not working, the product. The shipping's not right. Customer service isn't right. All the things aren't right, and so you just wait. And there's other people in your same company that don't wait, and everything isn't right for them either, but they're making a fortune. But I'm not going to bring a newborn into this. Guys, it's all about you. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you the problems. And if you persevere through those problems, do you think your company wants to make things better? Then if you want to give birth, just tell the people you're giving birth to that everything isn't perfect. Don't tell them everything isn't perfect. I remember the company I just came from. You know what I used to say? Don't expect this to work. Because it didn't. Some of the features didn't work. We had no customer service. Some of you know what I'm talking about. We over-promised, under-delivered in that other company. So you know what I did? I started getting really good. I said, when I bring somebody in, I go, let, let, let me be very clear with you. I'm excited about this. I think this is the next big thing. But just so you know, our product isn't what it's going to be. Our customer service lack. We lack customer service. And I wouldn't overpromise. I said, but you know what? There's still an amazing opportunity here. So I would just give birth the right way. Does that make sense? Now I can look myself in the mirror when the person starts to complain. Well, hang on a second. This is, this is the reason why we have such a great opportunity because everything isn't perfect. Now I'm going off script here because I know it holds a lot of you back. 
I know exactly what it is. But I promise you, if all of a sudden you put everything you got into it, those things tend to go away. Why? Because you're being driven by what you're being driven by every day, which is fear of loss. So those are three examples. Those are three examples of any type of business. So a lot of people, you think you're in a different type of business. No, you're not. No, you're not. You have a company. Your company has products. For you to make money, someone's gotta buy the product. That's any business, right? Okay, so you own a traditional business. So stop with the multi-level stuff. Like it's that different. It's not. Okay, now when I say stop about the multi-level stuff, stuff, I talk to people like a traditional business. I had a conversation with some doctors yesterday. Three-way call. He said, can you explain the business model? I said, you're a doctor, right? I said, explain your business model. He said, well, I need new patients. That's what I need. I said, well, I need people using my products. Same business model. I go, do you make money when you see a patient? He said, yes, but it's getting less and less because of reimbursements. So I just had him tell me all the problems with his business. I said, well, let me tell you about our business. Our business could help you solve these problems. And we're going to be bringing in more patients to you. But in order for you to make money, we got to get people using the service. He goes, I have the people to use the service. I go, then we can make a lot of money together. I didn't go through upline, downline, 20%, 30%, whatever it is. I go, let me share with you the concept. Let me tell you what we're doing here. Got it. The money was insignificant. How the product work and the technology behind it, it never even came up. Why? I just relate it to his business. I said, we were born because of the problems you have, Doc. That's the reason why our company was even born. It's here to help you solve your problems. Oh. And some of those dollars that you're losing, we're going to put them back in your pocket. You guys, you got to be you got to start getting good. You started got you got to understand your craft. So, having said all that, it's okay. You could relaunch. You could start over. It's okay. But when you have it, you got to have the right mentality. I'm just going to go through some of the principles today. You got to have a first week income story. You got to create it. You got to create a story that you could sell. In the beginning, you know what you're selling? You're selling your belief. As soon as you get a result, as soon as you get a result, you could talk about the results you have. You don't have to wait to get a result in order to launch your business. Remember the restaurant? No results. In fact, you're a half a million dollars in debt. What kind of result is that? What are you sharing there? No one has even taken a bite of your food. No one's drank your alcohol. No one's enjoyed your entertainment yet but yet you're telling everybody how great it is, right? But as soon as you start getting reviews on Yelp, you can start to point not about your belief, you can start to point to other people's belief in your product. Does that make sense? Now you can say, look at, look at my Yelps. Look at all the people that love the food. Well, this is your first week income story. And let me tell you what's important. The amount is irrelevant, comma is necessary. You know what that means? Create a dollar amount success story. I made $1,000 this month. That's a comma. You need a comma for $1,000. I made 3,000. Now let me share with you how you do this. 30 day story, show prospects and your team what you did what they didn't know you could do. Show them what you did. Create your 30s. This, this, is, this is your show and tell. This is for your naysayers. Man, look what just happened. Because you have a comma to market. And you're showing your prospects and your team. You're showing the, your taillights. 
you're showing your energy and your excitement. Something happens when you do this. And guess who you're impressing the most? You know who I want you to impress the most? Yourself. I want you to be impressed with you. I want you to have confidence in you. I don't care about that. If Jeff has confidence, it makes no difference what anybody else thinks about me. It took a while to get here, but I have confidence. I know that I know. This is what I want you to get to, guys. I want you to get to a point that you're winking at yourself when you look in the mirror. You feel good about yourself. That's what I want. So that's what the 30-day success story is. It's proving to yourself. Let me tell you what another thing is as far as 30-day success story. Holding yourself accountable to what you say you're going to do. For 30 days, I'm going all in. And here's what I'm going to do. And these are the components of a launch in your 30 days. Build a strong list of contacts. Oh, here we go again. Yes, here I go again. Remember the analogy? I don't know anybody, Jeff, but yet I have 500 people coming to my wedding. Hmm. Make the full list. Don't pre-qualify anybody right now. Just put together the list. Now, this says strong list. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you how to build a strong list from the list. You got to have a list to build a strong list. See, if you're only building a strong list, you're pre qualifying. I want you to build a list and then I want you to do number two qualify your list and select your top 20. Now, Jeff, aren't you contradicting yourself here? No, I'm not. Let me tell you why. If I put together my entire list, right? If I put together my entire list, now I'm gonna select my top 20 based on what? Remember, this is my warm market. So if I have Christy on my list, as an example, I'm gonna say, okay, Christy's gonna be my top 20, why? Because I know Christy. I know she's been successful before. I know where she lives. I know the family she comes from. I know her pedigree. I know her attitude. I know her energy. And because I know all these things and I grade, I grade Christy above average, she's part of my top 20. Remember, I'm gonna talk to everybody, but I'm going to identify my top 20. Now, who are these people? These are individuals who have the most influence. Reach. I know she knows people. I know she's done this before. And just remember, a big man knows. A big man's no and a little man's no hurts the same. But a big man's yes produces much more. Your odds are 50-50 any way you look at it. If you're nervous to call them, that's a confirmation to call them. Hello. A no's a no, but a, a, but a yes from a person with influence produces a lot. Now, thumbs up. Do you understand what I mean by making your list and then identifying your top 20? That's what I'm talking about. You know the people. You know what they've done. And then number three, concept now. Hold a meeting. You, with maybe with your sponsor, with your upline, a conference call with the top 20. The purpose is to have a conversation about the future. Paint the picture and cast the vision. Let them know where they fit into the launch. The benefits of, use this term, first mover's advantage. Another term, I'm putting together my board of directors. If you're not confident, then market the person in your upline that is confident. And just be a good inviter. 
on this initial meeting that you're gonna do. This could be done at your house. It could be done through Zoom, a conference call. You're gathering a group of people, right? Just like you would if you were looking for investors. If you were looking for investors and you needed $5 million to launch your vision and you really were sold on your vision, would you not have a vision call for your investors? We just did this in the company I'm with. Two months ago, we had a fly-in for potential investors of the new company that we just launched. We flew them in and guess what? All we did at that meeting was cast the vision. And we raised over $3 million with our investors. Well, you're doing the same thing. But see, here's what it is. It's your limited thinking. Do you understand that each one of you, if you build this business right, you can have a $100 million company, a $50 million company, a $20 million company, and these top 20 people are gonna sit on top of what's about to happen. This is how you gotta cast vision. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. My board of directors, I believe without a doubt, I'm gonna to put together a team and we're gonna do $50 million in the next 24 months. And let me share with you, okay, that $50 million is going to be something my top 20 people are gonna have the opportunity of earning off of. And I'm just gonna share the vision. I'm gonna share the product. And if you're interested, that's why I called you because I'm putting together the people that wanna take advantage of my first mover's advantage. Now the person feels special. You chose me, yes. Hold a Zoom meeting with your top 20, top 15, top 10, top 30. And then if you're not confident enough, I promise you, if you launch, someone in that company that you represent will help you with that vision call. I promise you. Okay? Name the launch. Name your launch. Okay? Project 500, Project 100, Project 10,000. In other words, if I'm gonna talk to my top 20 and I say, listen, when I put together my top 20 that take advantage of this first mover's advantage, we're putting together immediately Project 500, which means we're gonna put 500 people in this right away. What do you think the top 20 are thinking? Wow. This is gonna be underneath me. Naming is showing, shows significance. People wanna be part of something big. Name your project, guys. The number involved is contingent upon the size of your network and your level of influence within it. The launch would need to consist of a series of massive action exposures over 90 days. Now, guys, listen. Not everybody qualifies for a launch. Some people, right? I, I didn't qualify for a launch when I first got involved in network marketing. My belief wasn't right. I'm just giving you the concepts here. You could launch, right? Just by having a series of Zoom meetings with your initial. My point is you guys move, action. But you always wanted to know how people do what they do in their first month. These people that you hear about in your companies that get to diamond or pre, whatever your top rank is, you go, how did they do that? This is what they did. They had influence. And they had a series of massive action over 90 days. Focus. Right, we've talked about this here, but I wanna re-emphasize, re remove your distractions, TV, music, casual events, et cetera. Anything that will take you, take you off your focus. You know what your distractions are. Have a conversation with your family so they understand the time commitment and sacrifice required. This works two ways. 
It lets the people that you love know you're serious, right? And it lets yourself know that you're serious if you do this. <laughs> you follow me? I'm more worried about letting yourself know that you're serious. If you let yourself know you're serious, everybody else will. That takes care of itself. Give them a reward to look forward to a result as a result for their support. In other words, okay, little Mikey, little Sarah, don't worry. After daddy launches, daddy's going to make a lot of money. Daddy's going to take you wherever you want to go. Where do you want to go? Okay. Make it fun. Make them get behind you and, and cheer you on. Then all out massive exposure. Now, don't let this scare you, but you want to know what people do that get the results that they get? Massive exposure. Part-time should consist of four to six events with a goal of five people in attendance per event exposure. A good first month will consist of 20 to 30 event exposures. Event exposures, meetings, conference calls, etc. Now listen, guys, this self feeds upon itself. Let me share with you. You got your top 20, right? Let's say you bring in 20 people. Let's say you bring in 10. Well, guess what? You're doing with those 10 people. Same thing, right? Aren't you launching them and they're talking, they're reaching out to their top 20? Do you see how you could have four to six events? You're scheduling your first four to six. But as soon as you get people in, you're scheduling their events. And if you get a runner, I'm telling you, a runner could bring you in a thousand people like that. But who's putting together the schedule? You are. Who's pushing the snowball up the hill? You are. And this, that's why you benefit from the avalanche once you get this thing established. Most people will never get it to the top of the mountain where you have the avalanche. You stop. Well, look what full-time is. This was me when I was in Organo Gold. Four to six events a day we were doing. Four to six calls a day. We didn't do 120 the, the month we got to Diamond in that company. We did 93 events the month we went to Diamond. Crazy, right? Well, I can't compare myself to you and Lisa. You're both full-time. Then don't. Then don't. But put together your massive action. So that's it. So event exposures. That's this is this is the concept. Okay? So just to reiterate. Just to reiterate. Right, build a strong list of contacts, qualify your list. Now you know what that means, I got deep on that. Okay, hold your meetings, name your launch, focus for 90 days, you know what 90 days does? It changes your life. Guys, let, let me just, just think for one second, because some of you, I could see what your brain is doing, okay? 90 days, it's July, let's go back. Okay, it's July, so June, May, April. Doesn't it seem like yesterday? Doesn't April seem like yesterday? It goes like this. And if you're working hard, it really goes fast. My point is 90 days is nothing. But I promise you, blink. This is why I laugh, blink, and I promise you, that's why I said what I said in the beginning, you're buying your Christmas tree. Blink, it's Christmas. And we just wasted six more months. I want you to get excited. I want you to know that what you're doing is no different than what everybody else is doing in business. Guys, I used to buy a brand new piece, one new life cycle. One new life cycle, I would put it in the club and I would do a reopening. And that would drive 90 days more revenue. One new life cycle. Okay, what's the, what, what's the analogy here? 
you could start over. You could start, listen, let me ask you a question. If you left your current company, if you left your current company right now and you got re-excited about another company, would you not launch again? Why do you have to change to launch? Why do people think they have to keep jumping from company to company to relaunch? You think the answer is another company. It's not. You think the answer is a different product. It's not. You think the answer is a better comp plan. It's not. The answer is here. The answer is here. It's your belief in what you are involved in. It's not jumping around, guys. It's going back to what Eric said. For things to change, you have to change. You could change within your own company. Just change. No need to change, okay? Success, success isn't something you pursue. It's something you attract. Remember, you gotta sell yourself first. And what was the last one? Formal education will help you make a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Stay in what you're doing. Learn your craft because where you are is good enough. Just change this. Just change what you're doing every day. Every day looks the same. And that's the component of a launch. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. I'll see you Monday. Talk to you soon. Bye, guys.